Hello everybody and welcome to the second session concerning the atoms. During this session, you will learn to first differentiate between emission and absorption spectra, second distinguish between coherent and non-coherent light, and finally explain the principle of laser emission. The last two points concern GS students only. Let's begin with spectroscopy. Spectroscopy consists on specifying the various radiations composing the light emitted or absorbed by a substance. Spectral analysis is done using a spectroscope. For example, the light emitted by the source enters the spectroscope through the slit and on the screen we can see the different radiations composing the analyzed light. If the source contains a high pressure gas, a liquid or a solid brought to high temperature, we obtain a continuous spectrum. If the source contains a low pressure gas heated or subjected to electric discharges, we obtain a line emission spectrum, which is not continuous. If now we use a white light source and between the source and the spectroscope we place a cold gas, we will then obtain a line absorption spectrum of the element corresponding to that gas. How do we interpret emission spectra? The emission spectra are made up of thin and parallel lines. Each of these lines is associated with a transition during which the energy of the atom decreases. What about absorption spectra? The absorption spectra are made of thin black lines. Each of these lines is associated with a transition during which the energy of the atom increases. Remark. If we compare the emission spectrum and the absorption spectrum of an element, we can see that the wavelengths of the radiations absorbed by the element are exactly equal to those emitted by this element. Therefore, a chemical entity can only absorb the radiations it can emit. And we can say that the spectra are characteristic of the chemical entity that emits or absorb the radiation. Concerning the hydrogen atom, it has several spectral series depending on the level to which the excited atom falls. For example, from n greater than 1 to n equal 1, we have Lehman series, which is in the UV part of the spectrum. From n greater than 2 to n equal 2, we have Balmer series, which is in the visible part. From n greater than 3 to n equal 3, we have Passion series, etc., bracket, fund. Those series are in the infrared part. Balmer is in the visible and Lehman series is in the UV part of the spectrum. In the visible domain, the emission spectrum of the hydrogen atom essentially consists of four bright lines. The animation here allows us to better understand this emission spectrum. We have here the bright lines. Each of these bright lines is associated to a transition from a level n greater than 2 to, a to the level n equal 2. For example, from n equal 3 to n equal 2, we have this one, this bright line. 4 to 2, it's associated to this bright line. The transition 5 to 2 is associated to this bright line. 
And finally, the transition 6 to 2 is associated to this bright line. To better understand what has been explained, let's solve an exercise. The emission spectrum of the adjacent figure is that of a hydrogen lamp. First question, is the light emitted by such a lamp monochromatic or polychromatic justified? To answer this, que this question, we should know that monochromatic light has a single frequency single wavelengths. Since the emission spectrum that we have here has several lines, the light emitted is polychromatic. Second question. A white light source illuminates a gas made of hydrogen. The study of the absorption spectrum reveals the presence of black lines. Specify the number of these lines. We have seen that a chemical entity can only absorb the radiations it can emit. Since there are four bright lines in the emission spectrum of hydrogen, there will be four black lines in its absorption spectrum. We now move to the second part of the session. It concerns the laser and it's only for GS students. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. What is its principle? Let's begin by explaining what is a stimulated emission. We have here an atom in the excited state E2 and a photon carrying the energy E2 minus E1, exactly equal to the difference between these two energy levels. What happens if this photon hits the atom? When a photon of energy E2 minus E1 hits an atom in the excited state E2, it can facilitate its de-excitation towards the state E1. There is then emission of a new photon identical to the first one. We have two identical photons here. This phenomenon is called stimulated emission and is the basis of how the laser works. For the stimulated emission to occur, the atom must be in the desired excited state by the time the incident photon arrives. But normally, the majority of the atoms are in the ground state. In order to have more atoms in the higher energy level, we must create a population inversion. What distinguishes the light emitted by a laser from the light emitted by a conventional source? Conventional light sources, like light bulbs, stars, etc., emit polychromatic and incoherent light. This means that photons are emitted randomly. On the contrary, laser light is monochromatic and coherent. This means that the waves associated with the emitted photons are in phase. For more practice, you can do the exercises listed here. What have we learned in this session? First, the emission spectra are made up of thin and parallel lines. Each of these lines is associated with a transition during which the energy of the atom decreases. Second, the absorption spectra are made of thin black lines. Each of these lines is associated with a transition during which the energy of the atom increases. Third, spectra are characteristic of the chemical entity 
that emits or absorbs the radiation. 4. The hydrogen atom has several spectral series, depending on the energy level to which the excited atom falls. And finally, the laser light is monochromatic and coherent. It's produced by stimulated emission enhanced by a population inversion between two specific energy levels. Thank you and hope to see you soon in a new session.